right, thanks for staying with us. Well, earlier this week, Governor Rick Scott and the state cabinet went on the road to Miami and quickly proceeded to bash the Obama health care plan. U.S. These Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius came to Tampa to last week to announce cash for the state. It's to move forward on federal health care reform. We'll help local individuals and families apply for coverage. This letter from Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi and 12 other Republican attorneys general raises questions about training for the new navigators. Bondi vocalized the concerns at a state cabinet meeting Tuesday. Are they going to be fingerprinted? Are they going to get background checks? Here's why that's important. They're going to have access to your tax information. Bondi was joined by the governor who asked pointed questions of the state insurance commissioner. Do you think that you could actually train somebody to do this job in 20 hours? Um, no. No. Progress Florida believes there are political motivations behind the criticism. They're going to face severe criminal penalties if they violate any, any of people's uh, privacy. So I really think that what we're seeing here is uh, just more politics. Experts say the biggest fear of people violating your privacy isn't health navigators, but people that email you or call you on the phone asking for information. AARP says consumers need to exercise basic caution. Do your own research because chances are the person who's calling asking for that sensitive information is not on the up and up. Training for navigators was cut from 30 hours to 20 in an effort to get the program up and running by October. All right, joining me now, Damian Filer from Progress Florida. Damian, thank you for being here. Thank you. As we saw on the tape piece, do you believe that the opposition to these health navigators is uh, uh, potentially political? Why do you say that? Well, I think it's a little more than potentially. It's been political uh, since long before Rick Scott was even in the, in the governor's office. He has really been, uh, on the national stage, a leading opponent of what has now been uh, termed Obamacare. Uh, he and Pam Bondi both are, are really uh, leading opponents of uh, for whatever their own political motivations and reasons uh, for providing access to health care to close to four million Floridians who still need it today. All right, and the legislature stopped this year and, and backed away from the plan to expand Medicaid, which the governor at one time called for. Uh, do you anticipate something happens before the end of the year? What do you think the legislature may do there? I don't think there's any question but that this remains a front burner issue and that the legislature is going to have to address it one way or the other. Uh, what we saw was real obstruction uh, during the last legislative session by the speaker, Will Weatherford, uh, who just seemed adamantly opposed to allowing uh, the, the expansion of, of access to, to health care to Medicaid recipients in Florida. Um, uh, you know, I don't think he was ever able to adequately articulate his reasons for, for doing that. The funding is there, um, and there's overwhelming support. There were several polls done before the legislative session started uh, throughout the process that show overwhelmingly about two-thirds of Floridians strongly support that expansion of access uh, to Medicaid here in Florida. You know, one of the axioms here in the state capital is follow the money, mm -hmm. and there's so much money, $50 billion over 10 years, so but that's $5 billion that could be available to spend on health care in Florida. It seems to me the health care providers uh, who have pretty deep pockets would be pushing pretty hard. Absolutely, and I think some of them some of them are, and, and there are a little bit of some strange bedfellows going on in, in this political fight. Um, I think what we're seeing here really is, is an entrenched political extremism on the right that we haven't really seen in, in recent years here in Florida, uh, where we're just seeing uh, that they're just dug in. Um, and, and it's an issue where, as you brought up, even the governor was willing to compromise to a certain extent during this last legislative session, and it really became uh, solely the speaker who, who was standing in the way of it. Um, I, I think that uh, this issue is going to have to be revisited. And, and the plan that came out of the Senate, the Negron plan, Senator mm -hmm. Joe Negron, mm -hmm. who's vying to be Senate President, really did an awful lot of what the Medicaid expansion did, but they called it a Florida plan. Right, right. I think that it was important, uh, you know, for, for some in the Senate leadership to feel like they had their own brand on this plan and their own uh, spin on it. And, uh, you know, there were, th this is complicated stuff, and there are certainly some advocates for health care expansion who had uh, some concerns with what the Senate was proposing, but uh, by far it was the best proposal that was out there, and it, it would really have been a significant step in the right direction here in Florida. Now, Rick Scott, as we talked about, said, did go and embrace the health care uh, Medicaid expansion, but he really spent no political capital during the legislative session to actually try and pass it. 
And, and then I guess now that we see the opposition of the navigators and, and that, uh, it doesn't seem like he's going to be out in front on this issue again. No, it really doesn't. And uh, you make a good point. He, he came out publicly and said that before the session started that he was in favor of expansion, which caught a lot of people by surprise. Political observers weren't expecting that move. Uh, I think a lot of people read some politics into it. I, my sense is that it backfired on him politically because it ended up upsetting his far-right Tea Party base. Uh, who are adamantly opposed to this type of expansion. But then it was such a lackluster effort on his part. We really never heard from him again. He never exhibited any sort of leadership, any sort of sway. Uh, he never really made any effort during the entire legislative process to exert his will on this issue, which then made the people who were really in favor of expansion as skeptical as they've always been about, about his intentions and, and where he's coming from on on the issue of health care expansion. So uh, I don't know what his thinking was. I think it, like I said, politically was a, 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 a bad move for him. But more important to me uh, is that it simply failed the people of Florida, who millions of whom still need access to health care. Well, and, and the point was, as soon as that story broke that he was going to support this plan, there was talk of potentially a Republican primary all of a sudden. Right, right. Well, and, and politics, of course, you know, in the legislative process uh, factors into everything. Every move that the leadership makes is, is looked at through the lens. I mean, you know, there's been talk about whether Will Weatherford is one of those people who would consider getting into a, a Republican primary for governor. Um, and others have, have come up. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think um, the, the irony to me, if you look at this both in the Florida legislature and in Washington in Congress, people on both sides of the aisle, Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, are sick to death of the gridlock and the, and the political gamesmanship. And I really think any of these politicians would be doing themselves a favor if they actually got something done. Um, the people in Florida want to see this federal money come down. They want to see the expansion uh, of access to health care. And I think that anybody who really made meaningful strides in, in, that, uh, in that direction would actually see a political benefit from it. All right, Damien Father, thanks so much for being here. Everyone else, stay with us. We'll be right back.